course, on this page you will be able to access the NOFA, the Notice of Funding Availability, which will provide a good framework for the program for you. Uh, it'll also be what we are working from on this webinar today. Uh, also on the home page, there is a Frequently Asked Questions sheet, which we update every time a question is posed to our staff to ensure that everyone is aware of the questions uh, and then the answers that are being provided. Um, during the call, uh, all participants will be uh, muted for audio. Uh, and, and so if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to type those into the questions box uh, on your webinar application. Uh, I will, if it is a technical question, I will do my best to address it uh, as soon as possible. If it is uh, regarding the webinar or the, prog uh, the funding program, we will hold questions until the very end, and then after Bevan and Kemp have presented, we will go to a question answer session, and I will pose those questions uh, for answers from Kemp or Bevan. Again, I want to reiterate that a sheet with all of the frequently asked questions that we have received is available online. That's dra.gov slash initiatives slash delta dash workforce. So please feel free to go to that website and, and follow along with those questions as well if a question arises for you. Um, finally, uh, this particular webinar, since we have a multitude of parties uh, participating, we ask that any questions that you pose not be specific to your application or the idea that you're working with for an application. If it is program specific, we ask that you direct those questions to us via email at deltaworkforce at dra.gov. Uh, to walk through the agenda for today's uh, webinar, uh, we will begin with Bevan outlining a description of the funding opportunity, the purpose and policy statement of our Reimagining the Delta Workforce Policy Initiative, and then the subsequent Capacity Building and Technical Assistance Funding Program. Uh, she will discuss the report, Reimagining Workforce Development, which serves as the framework for our Workforce Development Policy Initiative. Um, and then we'll discuss the award information, who should apply for funding, approved uses of those funds, uh, and then Kemp will discuss the basic eligibility requirements for uh, the program, as well as walk you through application requirements, and then how to apply uh, online through our website application. And finally, we'll discuss final submission requirements and the award timeline, and then move on to questions. So without further ado, I will kick it off to uh, Bevan to begin the webinar. Thank you, Spencer. Thank you all for joining us today. As Spencer said, my name is Seven Hunter. I am the senior advisor to the federal co-chairman at the Delta Regional Authority, and I'm glad you all could join us today. Um, I'm going to be discussing the description of the NOFA, and basically it is to a competitive technical assistance capacity building and implementation investment program. Um, and by that, we are looking to allow rural counties and parishes and states to develop a connected workforce development system at the local level. So we are looking to either help you start a workforce conversation in your community or communities, or help you broaden your current workforce plan in those areas. Um, the fund was, as I said, cr created to help you build a competitive technical assistance and capacity building implementation system. Um, and I want to touch on the four areas of the Reimagining the Workforce Development book. Hopefully you've been able to join us at um, one of our workforce summits throughout the region and we're able to receive a book um, at that summit. If not, you can download it um, at dra.gov under the workforce or you can uh, email us at 
uh, deltaworkforce.gov, and we will get you uh, a book in the mail. Um, when looking at the NOVA and planning your application, please remember uh, to think about the, the four R's. The first one being reimagining readiness. And that's just where we are wanting you to demonstrate a plan to strengthen connections between education and job skills. Um, and that could be working with your community college, your four-year college, your technical assistant uh, college in your region, um, and your local business and industry, making sure that the programs offered are what the business and industry need um, and that they are valuable to them as they are looking to hire people in the workforce. Uh, additionally, rethinking the value of credentials in the workplace, um, and that goes with the ACT uh, program of the certified ready workers. And then to expose students to the world of work and take technology to scale, and that goes back to our educators uh, looking at taking the job skills uh, uh, that many people may not think about or are highly promoted jobs that are good um, paying jobs and introducing that into the, uh, into the high schools and junior highs so students have a better idea of what it means to be um, a welder or a carpenter or a plumber or an electrician or just anything. Just, those are just examples. Next, we want to talk about, re we want you to look at re-engaging adult learners and disconnected youth. Um, should you be looking to do something in this field, we would like you to demonstrate um, a plan to target adults who either lack a degree or credentials or they, uh, it assists dislocated workers, helping them to rejoin the workforce, and then um, re recover our disconnected youth, those that um, are not in the workplace um, and have no plans to get back into the workplace. Uh, those could be uh, working with correctional institutions to do a work training program uh, for them and or with the juvenile justice uh, individuals. Uh, to help programs for training individuals um, that are disconnected. The, the third is realigning relationships and resources. Um, we would hope that you can uh, demonstrate a plan to create uh, continuity in education and workforce development, align and track data across the education and workplace pipeline, and engage business in a meaningful way. And that kind of goes back to the first point of connecting yourself, leaders in your community, with your education leaders, your business and industry in your area, and looking at what's working, what's not working, and what you can do to break down those barriers and move the workforce forward in your community or your region. Uh, next is ramping up, and we're asking you to identify plans or action items uh, that would take your workforce uh, plans to a new level and to also give us some sort of time frame as to how you would go about doing this. Um, so in saying all of that, which is a lot, um, again, the I, I would turn you back over to the Reimagining the Workforce Development book, which can help you with a lot of, a lot of these areas and can be um, downloaded on our site, or we can send you a, uh, a paper copy. And uh, the next that I would like to talk to you about <coughs> is the award information. DRA is going to provide approximately 30 uh, lead applications, anywhere up to $50,000 for a single community to up to um, $150,000 for multiple uh, communities. Um, those selected will be able to access 
the skill levels and plan for increased readiness by the use of technical assistance providers, much like uh, ACT, which I did talk about earlier. Um, and that is the, the career ready certificate. And also, um, there's jobs for the future um, and that help with the uh, technical assistance and capacity building strategies. Um, I do want to go over with you, I, I know most of you have probably read the note, but if you haven't, want to go over with you just quickly what the award funds may be used for. Um, technical assistance activities may include the generation of community-driven workforce development action plans and promote closing the skills gap. Designing of career pathway programs that enable adults and displaced workers into specialty careers. Implementation of high quality on-the-job training programs. Designing of accelerated and contextualized classroom-based learning opportunities and building of capacity for workforce intermediaries. Specific uses for these funds include planning and technical assistance activities, meeting space and materials, organizational and community training development, uh, required travel for your facilitators as well as your participants, and then approved impl implementation support. Uh, the funds may not be used for operating costs, which include salaries, indirect costs, project administration, uh, you may, payment costs to construct facilities to be used for commercial rental, where the applicant has no control over the tenants and services offered, and construction of facilities primary for the purpose of housing state, federal, or quasi-federal agencies or financing recreational facilities or community antenna television services or facilities. Um, also, the funds, as we mentioned earlier, that can be used uh, for required travel for facilitators and participants. That is travel. That is uh, mileage, lodging, uh, airplane, or whatever if it takes to get a, a facilitator in but that does not I'm not sure what that is um, but that does not include a stipend so that you cannot have an additional stipend to get people there the incentive um, to, to be there to learn should are, is is part of them participating so basically when it comes to required travel for, for facilitators and participants it is only mileage, lodging, any of those type of, that type of, uh, of required travel, uh, whether it's plane, train, or automobile. Uh, but other than that, that would be it. Um, so thank you for your time, and I will turn it over to Kemp. Can you all hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um, Director of Project Development Management uh, for DRA, and um, I want to cover uh, a couple things. Um, uh, let's see, where are we? Basic eligibility. Um, if, just like with our CDAP program or any of uh, our other funding programs, um, it's, it's the same eligible entities, um, state government, local municipalities, nonprofits, that type of thing. Um, the planning and development districts would fall into this category as well. Um, and from the, I, w I did want to pick up on what Seven was saying, let's see, on the, um, on the travel. Uh, again, for the facilitators, it may go uh, a little beyond just the mileage. Uh, but for the participants, we're going to hold that to uh, whatever the federal rate is. I think it's 56 cents a mile, um, and uh, that would be that would uh, be all that the participants would be eligible for, and that would be reimbursed. Uh, they would have to turn in travel uh, form that we would provide in order to get that. And so, 
that's the only thing I wanted to touch on on the eligibility requirements. Um, as far as the application requirements go, um, in addition to uh, filling out our application materials online, um, which I'm not sure if everybody on the call uh, has applied for DRA funding in the past or not, but we have an online funding portal and uh, it would have uh, basically a project narrative uh, in the 424 forms that basically capture your entity information, contact information. Uh, in addition to that, we would also need a one-page letter of interest, uh, which includes these items uh, in this bullet list. Uh, be specific. Uh, we don't need really um, a lot of a, a lot of background. Uh, I think we want to know, especially for those that are beyond the planning stage. Uh, we want to hear a little bit about that. We want to see uh, what sort of plans you have in place. Um, and for those that are uh, applying for uh, the, the planning money, uh, then you know we definitely want to see what those thoughts are as far as is it an ACT work ready uh, community type deal. Um, this whole initiative really kind of got kicked off the ground with conversation with ACT folks. We didn't want to limit uh, everyone. Uh, we figured there were other um, similar programs uh, in the country uh, that other folks were, were more maybe comfortable with or, or knew more about uh, and may be already in process. Uh, so we wanted to, to allow for those as well. Um, on the next screen, uh, we've just got uh, on our website, this is a screen capture from, from the login page. Uh, if you have logged in before to create an application, a CDAP application, then you can use your, um, you can use your um, current login information. If you have not, then you'll need to go there to the bottom uh, and create an account and provide that information. Um, if you have technical difficulties, you would probably just give me a call uh, here at the office. Uh, my, my contact information is on the website. Um, okay, next screen. Uh, this is just like the first thing that you see uh, after you create your login or you, you log in and, and click uh, create new application. So you would fill in begin this information, this is just one screen of many, uh, and you would fill in, uh, like I said, each of the four, the project narrative, the 424 form, and 424A is the budget form, and 424B is the assurances page. So provide that information and submit. I believe I have uh, 12 or 15 so far uh, that, I, that I've identified anyway. Um, we're also taking a look, a closer look at some of our CDAP applications from this year that uh, were workforce development related to see if uh, any of those uh, might fit this NOPA uh, requirements. We might, we might go in that direction with those. Um, that is the application. Um, November 10th is the deadline to submit the applications, so uh, we don't have much time left. Um, hopefully most of you who are on the call have been on another webinar and heard some of this information or been to the website and, and listened to the old webinars or checked the NOPA out. Um, we don't want to uh, discourage anybody from, from applying, but uh, like I said, uh, we're, we're getting close to uh, the, the cutoff, the deadline. Uh, we will take until November 21st to get those reviewed uh, and uh, selected. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to turn it back over to Spencer. Great. Thank you, Kev. Um, so, so now we will move on to any questions that there may be. Um, I have not received any questions during the webinar, um, but if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into uh, your webinar app, and uh, we will be happy to address them. 
uh, while we're waiting to see if there are any questions, just to reiterate that on your screen right now you'll see uh, Kemp's contact information as well as my contact information by phone. We ask that all uh, questions, if possible, be directed to our email address for this program, Delta Workforce at DRA.gov, and uh, we will be closely monitoring that email account to answer any questions that arise. Um, we have a question in that is, does the grant fund speaker and facilitator fees? Um, Spencer or Bevan, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe so, and their travel, uh, that would be uh, probably a contractual sort of um, budget category. Correct. That is correct. Um, and then a, a follow-up question to that is, can the, can the funding program uh, cover work keys test fees as well? Yes. Yes, I can. Okay. Thanks, Ken. Uh, we have another question that is, what is the best way to reflect partnerships across multiple communities, or sorry, multiple counties? Letters of support from partners, or are there more official MOUs or agreements that will be needed to demonstrate those multi-county partnerships? Well, um, I mean, there's different ways to do it. Uh, letters of support are good. I think if there are MOUs in place or some other type of contract in place, those are definitely stronger um, and, and really show more clearly the commitment of those parties. Um, you know, if, 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 if it's a university and a and an economic development entity um, and the city, you know, having having just a support letter really, in my, my opinion, doesn't go far enough. And so if, if this were and it is somewhat competitive, the ones that, that provide that uh, clear insight as to how those relationships are built um, and what the commitment level is from those parties, I think those are the stronger apps for sure. Okay, another question is, can the funds be used to purchase training equipment for specialized trades? Um, yeah, I think we've gotten this question before, um, and uh, I mean, it kind of depends. Uh, we're, we're not, what we're not doing here is targeting um, specific indus single industry focused um, training. Um, and so if, if the equipment is part of a systems approach and a systems solution um, that, that was, I guess, derived from uh, the initial planning phase, then you can make the argument for it. Um, um, but if, it's, if, if what we're trying to do, to, if what you're trying to do is target, uh, just say, a welding program, then I would say that application is not going to get the closest look. Is that is that about fair, Spencer? Uh, yes, I think that's that's an adequate answer. Um, next question is: Is there a target award amount for each state? Um, Fifty. Fifty. Well, for each state, um, no. And so I've not received applications, to my knowledge, from Arkansas um, or Illinois. Of the other states, I think I have some sort of representation there. Uh, so if, if I don't get an application from, from either of those states, you know, of course, the, the funds are going to the, to the successful applicants, no matter where they are. Um, so, but 50,000 is, is sort of the limit for um, single projects. Um, and if it is a multi-county 
um, effort, and there's you know good support uh, throughout those counties, then we could go up to 150. Great. Next question is regarding uh, you pointing out that some CDAP uh, applications might be uh, reconsidered if they, you know, if they directly support the funding program that we're discussing right now. Uh, question is, how do we know if a past CDAP application is currently being reviewed for this funding opportunity? Um, not, not, not past applications, but the applications that were submitted for the FY14 CDAP program. Um, and so you could email me and ask me if, if you submitted a workforce development CDAP app. Um, quite frankly, if it is identified as a workforce development, we are going to look at each one. Uh, that doesn't mean that the state wouldn't fund uh, a workforce development project from CDAP, but if the project met sort of these guidelines, then we would consider it uh, for that. And you would be notified when those selections are made and, and made official. Okay, next question is, what is the time frame for expenditure of the funds? Um, the, these are, the, these particular funds um, can't go beyond two years. And so what we're looking for is projects that get the money out the door relatively quick. So um, I would say a 12-month application, uh, or the the scope is is completed within a 12-month cycle or less than a, an 18-month cycle would probably uh, rank higher uh, in our review. Um, those that get to 24 months, um, when you get to the end of that 24 months, if you know you're asking for additional time to close it out or something, um, we we may not be able to do that at that point. So I'm, I'm definitely looking. Uh, favorably on the ones that are, are 12 to 15 months. Okay, next question is uh, the application space on funding.dra.gov indicates county and requests um, that you fill in for the county. What should they do to reflect a multiple county partnership in that, in that area of the application? Um, it, there on the project narrative, um, there's a spot for the county of the applicant, and then there's a spot for counties of of the project, and you can add additional rows. I do believe um, I know you can um, showing uh, where the service area is. And you may be able to do that as well on the 424. I'm not, I can't recall. Okay. Next question is what is the reporting structure and submission, you know, what's the system for report submission uh, for DRA? Um, just like with everything else we do, it's a quarterly reporting requirement. Um, you know, a narrative that reflects back on the tasks that were discussed in the in the proposal, um, the outcomes that were uh, we're working toward, uh, kind of where are we in that uh, attaining those. Uh, the, the financial uh, page is a part of that uh, quarterly report, um, and that's the SF. 425, I believe, is the right number. Uh, we can provide copies of those to, to those um, award recipients. OK, 
Okay, the next question is, although the emphasis is on rural communities, is greater consideration and weight given to those applications that highlight communities designated as distressed by DRA? Um, I don't, I, I, I think the answer is no. I mean, I, I, we're sort of limited with the funding that we're using to communities, counties, uh, whatever that might be, uh, under 50000 And so 90, 95% of our footprint is distressed. So I mean, I'm not sure that that's going to be a huge problem. OK, thank you. Uh, next question is, can the match be all in kind, or must some of it be in cash? No, it, it can be in kind. Uh, it just needs to, we will have to uh, make sure that, you know, with the reimbursement requests that are sent in, um, we need to see kind of a, a, an accounting for whatever that in kind is. Um, and I think each state probably has some sort of table that, that kind of lists, I don't know if it's uh, a person's time or equipment or whatever it is um, that kind of gives the rates for those things. So I mean, it needs to be based on on information that's uh, publicly available. Okay, uh, we will take one more question. Last question is: When do you expect funds to be available if they are a, if they are uh, awarded to an application? Um, what was that date, Spencer? The 21st is when we would have all the reviews complete? Correct. We will be making notifications on November 21st. Uh, you know, beginning after the 21st, I would say we should uh, be able to uh, take reimbursement requests. I mean, you would get a notice to proceed after that point, um, and so I mean, the funds should be available immediately thereafter, um, but we can't pay, you know, can't pay for things that have already been done, of course. Um, it, it, would, it would begin, I guess, with that notice to proceed date and uh, moving forward. So uh, funds would, should be available immediately thereafter. Okay, great. I think those are all the questions that have been posed uh, by our participants today. Um, thank you to Bevan and Kemp for your time in explaining this funding program. Um, again, I'd like to reiterate that if you have any further questions, please feel free to email us at deltaworkforce at dra.gov, which you can see on your screen. Additionally, I will be sending up a follow-up a follow email with links to our webpage and the NOFA, as well as to the recording of this webinar, which will be available online on our YouTube page. And then finally, I encourage you, again, to review the, uh, the Frequently Asked Questions page that we have available on the Workforce Development website. I think it'll be very helpful in answering maybe some last minute questions that, that arise over the next uh, 10 days before the application deadline. Again, application deadline is uh, November 10th, which is a Monday. Uh, they are due by 11.59 uh, Central Time. And it, again, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to email deltaworkforce at dra.gov. Thank you for, for participating and for your interest in this funding program, and we look forward to reviewing your applications. Uh, Kemp and Bevan, do you have anything else you'd like to add to the webinar? Bevan? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you all for joining us, and we look forward to receiving your uh, applications. Yeah, and uh, I would just add the, the FAQs are, uh, have been updated uh, with questions that we've received since the last webinar and I would assume would be updated with some of these. So yeah, definitely, definitely check that out. Thank you. Great. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, and 
we look forward to reviewing your applications. Have a great afternoon.